Oh hey, I've heard rumors that you can just level up by just punching a ton of bugs. Who knew leveling up would be so easy? It's a good thing I left my sandwich on my desk for 5 years. Inflation's been hard. From now on, I'll dedicate my entire time to just punching a ton of bugs. By then, I'll be as strong as the rock. Shrek 5 released. Yeah, that's pretty much all I can say about it. When I was a boy, I always loved watching TV shows and movies, most of which are obviously made for children and maybe for young teens as well. This was my go-to hobby back then, spending every dime of a second to watch Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. But the main reason why I love watching these is because I like being immersed in the world in the TV show or movie that I'm watching. So much of my childhood is me imagining what I would be like in that world. I recall one time when I imagined myself as a 7 year old Jedi Master teabagging Darth Vader and saving the galaxy. That was a really cool thing to me back then. They should have hired me when they were making the seagulls and look where that's got them. This is why I like asking my parents to buy me some action figures and I still have them today to remind me how autistic I was. By the time I laid my hands on an iPad and played my first ever video game, which was a Kung Fu Panda side-scroller, I realized that, wait, maybe there's another way to be more autistic. Never before have I been so immersed and focused in my life. It's not like when watching a movie where you're just watching it. You can interact with things in a video game, and that alone sold me. It was like my dream come true to influence a fantasy world my very eyes. But you see, most of my childhood was playing mobile games. Most of them back then were just simple puzzle games and side scrollers, and those were basically what I played back then. I just downloaded and played what's ever trending in the app store. A few moments passed and I stumbled upon the realm of YouTube, and what was the first thing I searched there? Cat. So you know those construction equipment with the cat logo on them? Well, I had a bunch of toys of them back then, and they just so happened to be beside me when I opened YouTube. But don't worry, I'm not done talking about cats yet. I still have to talk about this legend. Stampy Longhead, a name that I hold ton of respect and love for. To keep things short, this guy raised an entire generation of kids, and I'm one of them. He's well known as Stampy in his Lovely World series, where he does a bunch of games, builds iconic places, and creates stories that are so memorable. It's a shame that the series had ended, but I think it deserves its risk, considering that it's not as popular as it used to be, and that Stampy had to raise an entire generation of kids, unlike the other freak shows. This was my first foray into learning role-playing. I've done role-playing way before I had even learned the term, and by the time I did, I just got more invested to it. This was me when I first started. And look at me now. So in came the role-playing games. So role-playing games, RPGs for short, is a pretty broad term when you look at it technically. The most basic definition you could give is you play as a character, and the character you play as changes the story. But the definition could literally be applied to every other video game genre out there. Take Cuphead for example, you can either defeat a bunch of cartoon characters or make love to a pillar. Taika no Tatsujin, you can either beat to the rhythm or cause noise complaints. City Skylines, I love genocide. You see, that basic definition is so broad, you can apply that to every other video game genre. But you know a role-playing game when you see one. They just have that distinct smell. Ugh, Starfield! So according to Wikipedia, the best place for all your sources, a role-playing video game is where the player controls the actions of a character or several party members, immersed in some well-defined world usually involving some form of character development by way of recording statistics. If any English speaker can understand what that meant, don't worry cause I don't either. Recording statistics? I didn't know my mom played Skyrim. The definition here is a bit foggy as well. You can apply that once again to any other video game regardless of genre. You are the character, and you're controlling the actions in a well-defined world. This can be very confusing to a lot of people. I've heard people say Shaq Fu is one of their favorite RPGs. But you can't deny that RPGs have that distinct look and feel to them. So in order for us to better understand the unique aspects of RPGs, and to differentiate this genre from other video game genres, 
I have with me a smorgasbord of terms to see what makes an RPG an RPG. Starting off with number one, where the hell am I? RPGs are mostly known for having unique and iconic worlds, most of which are pure fantasy worlds. Sure, you can play in a dystopian world, in space, or even in real life places, but it's mostly fantasy. This can be rooted all the way back to the tabletop RPGs, specifically in the likes of Dungeons and Dragons. Fantasy is the go-to here, mainly because it's easier to come up with a bunch of wacky thingamajigs without having to be too technical and complex. Imagine creating a fictional super weapon in a sci-fi world. You have to come up with an entire research paper to even make sense of it. In a fantasy world, you can make a destroyer-like weapon by giving it a backstory when it used to be a goat. It's easy to make up stuff in a fantasy world because things were simpler back then and you don't have to study too many scientific or technological concepts. Just make stuff up. It's that simple. But what RPGs lack in common sense makes up for in their stories. Maybe a bit too much. Number 2. What the hell's happening? Of course the story is the main element of an RPG because without it, it's no longer an RPG. It's like eating a sandwich with no filling. Sure, you got the bread, but where's the other stuff? Gee, I wonder. The stories in RPGs are some of the most beautiful and well-crafted forms of storytelling. Along with the world these stories are set in, RPGs can house the best stories ever to exist. It's a shame not a lot of people are giving respect to some of these games. The entire Kingdom Hearts franchise has a better plotline to the sequel trilogy, and even they have more weird stuff than them. And not a lot of RPGs so far have been adapted to other forms of media besides the recent Fallout show. The most notable one that I can think of is Final Fantasy VII Advent Children. Sure, in most RPGs, you can customize an entire character to be like you, and it's not easy to adapt in a movie or TV show since the target audience is for everyone who has played or have heard of the game. But some RPGs like Final Fantasy VII have a set main character, meaning sure you can change the name of that character and even pick some dialogue options that character wouldn't really pick, but that character is still that character regardless of what and how you play as that character. Stories in RPGs are spectacular, but they can range from being fine to insanity. What the hell am I looking at right here? In most cases, RPGs tend to have the wackiest things happen in their series. Some are cool and awesome, but how the hell did Mickey Mouse end up in this universe? But RPGs contain a lot of detail in their stories, either incorporating that information into the foreground or just sticking it to extra collectibles you can find in the game world. It can be a bit overwhelming when a role-playing game just shoves a butt-ton of story on you, especially in a first-time playthrough, but if that does happen, it could either mean the game has an incredibly dense story and needs to find a way to cram all that data in the best way possible for the player to understand or the developers like reading. Because of that, RPGs usually take longer to beat than any other video game genre. I'd be 80 by the time I finish Persona 5. See, the thing with RPGs is that they're well known for being long as hell. At the minimum, they take around 20 hours to finish. I don't know why I still love RPGs after that sentence, I just love them. It's like life, the more time I have, the more happy I am. Please, hands up! Oh no, it's the... Pulis. Well, I heard you were being happy. Is that not my goal? Wait, did you just come here to distract me from being happy? Maybe. Alright, bye. Man, what a dick. Damn it. The play length of RPGs is so long, Elder Scrolls 6 would release by the time you finish one. And this is caused by a handful of other reasons. Number 3. Press the A button. The most common gameplay type for RPGs is turn-based RPGs, meaning you wait for your opponent to make a move before you do, and vice versa. This type of RPG just refused to die and for good reason. Turn-based RPGs involve strategy and coordination. Just like chess, you plan out the best possible moves, which can give your enemy a disadvantage in how to choose the best pieces to progress. That's a complex way of saying that. Most of the time, Regardless of the gameplay, you're going to be fighting enemies for hours. The stories in RPGs can be overwhelming and make players lose focus, so how do you solve that? Make them fight the same enemies 
over and over and over. This is my main problem with RPGs. Doing the same fights can feel repetitive and that's not a good way to make players enjoy your games. Most of these are random encounters in the game world, and they're usually there just to give you XP points and maybe some bonus items. Do you feel underleveled when fighting a boss? You can just fight the same enemies until you level up. This is called farming, doing the same encounters to become stronger or find rare items that can give you an advantage in battle. This is the most popular thing to come out of RPGs, other than RPGs themselves. There are all sorts of farming in other video game genres, they're just done in very different ways. But whenever I do some farming, it feels like I'm exploiting the game for rewards. At that point, I just begin to question, is this how the game was programmed? If that's what the developers wanted, just to farm and farm, they could have just done it in more creative and non-repetitive ways. What about side quests? They're a big part of RPGs, so if you want players to level up more easily, just do more side quests. I don't know man, I'm okay with farming in some RPGs, but when most of my playtime is just farming, that doesn't mean I enjoy playing your game, I just want to move on. Farming isn't really a bad thing, don't get me wrong. I've played RPGs for a long time and I've grown accustomed to it, but as I grow older, I become more conscious about it. It wasn't a big issue to me back then, but looking at it now, it's definitely a thing that's starting to feel a bit dated in a way. It all boils down to a love-hate relationship, but farming isn't really the only big issue with RPGs. Number 4. I love menus. What the fuck is all of this? Besides simulation games, RPGs have the most complex menu systems in all of gaming. There are menus in menus, submenus in menus, submenus in submenus, and these are so taxing to navigate. What happened to pressing just one button to go to the pause menu? Now I have to press this button, rotate the thumbstick to go there, and oh, I have to press another button, and use the thumbstick again. The cycle repeats over and over again. These complex user interfaces are often seen in MMORPGs, which are RPGs but online. The user interface in these games is more complex than calculus, but I'll happily explain the entire user interface in Star Wars The Old Republic, but I won't because I want to bitch about something else. Number 5. READ THE INSTRUCTIONS! RPGs just can't resist making things that seem easy to understand and turning them into an entirely new language. For example, Monster Hunter World, one of my favorite games of all time. To get the basics down, at the top right corner of your screen, it shows a list of actions that you can perform by pressing specific buttons. That seems simple enough, so long as you're using easy to understand weapons. And then we have things like, hey guys, today I'm going to be teaching you about the charge blade. It's a super simple tutorial and I hope you understand the lesson or else I'll come to your house and have forced sexual intercourse with your entire family. So here's how the charge blade works. The charge blade has two forms and a file system. Sword and shield form is the default form. Its combos it has a nice revolve bit of around ability, in defense, and attack. Its charge strikes its combos revolve sword around and shield also have between swift and main goal charge sword and shield form is to build up the charge and destroy the main goal of sword and shield form is to build up. You see what I mean? And these overcomplicated stuff influence the user interfaces I mentioned earlier. If your gameplay system isn't too complex, then we would have had a nice and simplified user interface, easy to understand and can be picked up right from the get-go. But if it isn't, I don't want to read the instructions on how to use this or that. Some games even have instructions for menus. Menus! Not how an attack works or how to do some combos, no, menus! But I'll still happy to explain the user interface in the old republic. Number 6. Perfection. Most RPGs that you create your own characters, and this is an integral part in identifying whether a game is an RPG or not. The core of RPGs is role-playing, so if you don't even have the chance to role-play as a character that you like playing, then it's not an RPG, that's Facebook. You can become anything you want in an RPG, that's the main goal. I can be a heroic viking slaying dragons and becoming the savior of the people, or become a gnome bard who can turn into a triceratops. Imagination is a driving part of the world of RPGs. One might say it's the origin of roleplay. You want to use that imagination to become the character you want to play, and character creators give you the chance to do that. 
character creators are amazing. You know a game is going to be fun when you create the most insane abominations known to mankind. There are so many options you can choose from in character creators. With modern role-playing games, character creators allow you to change the characteristics of your character from your hair all the way down to the tiniest details, like your genitalia. I love it when character creators are in the game, it adds more for the players to express their overall character and be able to portray their character in the game world. But it's not technically role-playing if you're only dressing for the part, you also have to act. Oh! I know, um... Download Tinder... Number 7. I Summon Rats You know your game's an RPG if it has a character creator and you can pick dialogue options. Most, if not all RPGs have dialogue options. These are choices you can make that can influence the story. At the very least, it can change your relationship with another NPC. This is yet another integral part of the RPGs. The choices you make, the actions you do, they all influence a large portion of the game in some way. With these options, RPGs can offer you an experience not other video game genres can give, the chance to become someone you imagine. It's like you're really there in the game world. Even with games that don't have character creators, the immersion is still there because you have the ability to influence the progression of the story to your own liking. But just because you have the option to choose the action you want to do doesn't always mean your desired outcome will happen. This is why most RPGs have skill checks where your one specific skill is required to reach this one particular level or point in order to successfully lay out your actions. This isn't just some mere gameplay barrier, it's actually important to have skill checks when making an action. Just like in real life, we make mistakes because we want to accomplish something so badly. That same ideology applies to RPGs. In one way or another, just like character creators, it adds more realism to the game world. Now these are all a bunch of stuff as to how I would personally define an RPG, but there are exceptional cases where one of these characters I laid out is not applied to an RPG much like Final Fantasy VII. You can't really customize the most important details of Cloud like his funny hairstyle, but for the most part, you're the one to decide which dialogue options to pick. With that being said, there are games that are not RPGs but have RPG elements. I see a lot of people saying that God of War is an RPG, I mean, it feels like it, sure, but technically if you look closer, it really isn't. You don't really get to choose how the story would play out. You can't customize Kratos other than his armor. The story is all linear, you play it from beginning to end. You don't get to decide what Kratos should be doing cause, come on, he's Kratos. You really think you can boss him around, of all people? Listen, I love the game, I love the series, I bought God of War Ragnarok day one, but I just don't think it's an RPG. Ghost of Tsushima is another example. An excellent game no doubt, but it's an action game, not an RPG. Sure, there are times when you get to decide what Jin Sakai can do, but these options don't really influence how the story is going to end. Even the ending lets you choose whether you'll spare your uncle's life or not, but that'll probably be meaningless by the time a sequel releases. There are way too many examples to talk about, but I hope you're getting my point. You can call anything an RPG, sure, I won't argue, but this is just how I classify an RPG, and I'm sure all of you have other perspectives. It's totally normal, but RPGs for me just need that specific formula to be classified as an RPG even if we can't totally pinpoint its exact details. In the meantime, while we're still arguing about the exact definition of RPGs, we gotta admit, we know an RPG when we see one. That's the simplest way to put it. And if you don't know an RPG when you see one, go ahead and play Candy Crush, who cares? RPGs are the best things created by humankind. Except fast food. But RPGs like everything else in life, have their faults, like the overly complicated menu systems that RPGs tend to have, and the farming shtick. But RPGs have been a huge part of my life. I love role-playing and I love video games. If you mash them together, it's like a dream come true. I just had a nightmare about socks. <gasps>